Figuring out your minimums on a basic instrument approach like a VOR here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin isn't too hard. There's two options, either the straight in approach to runway 27 or the circling approach. In both cases, the minimums for a Cat A aircraft like a Cessna 172 are 1,280 foot ceilings with one statute mile of visibility. Many airports, including smaller ones, now also have GPS approaches. Here's the GPS approach into the same runway at Oshkosh. The minimum section gets a bit more complicated, and we have an alphabet soup of different types of approaches. Remembering what these are and what they mean gives many instrument students trouble. Let's break down each one. The approach minimums, there are four on this approach, are organized from the lowest minimum at the top to the highest minimum at the bottom. The highest of all is the circling approach. Circling requires maneuvering in the traffic pattern to a runway the approach didn't line you up for, all while maintaining visual contact with the field. So the weather has to be a bit more favorable with higher minimums. Next up from there is an LNAV minimum, which stands for lateral navigation. This is the most basic type of GPS approach. As the name suggests, it provides only lateral guidance, much like a VOR approach or a localizer. It doesn't provide vertical guidance like on a precision ILS approach. Just like a VOR localizer approach then, a GPS approach with LNAV minimums is a non-precision approach. Also, like any non-precision approach, it has a minimum descent altitude, an MDA. This one is 1140 feet for all category aircraft. A VOR or localizer signal gets more sensitive the closer you are to the station, but GPS works differently. It has to artificially create the core sensitivity. When you're flying inbound to an airport along the extended center line, the course starts out being two nautical miles to either side. It stays that way until 30 miles from the airport and then it shrinks down to one mile. Close to the final approach fix, the GPS goes into approach mode, and the sensitivity goes to 0.3 nautical miles to either side of the extended center line, and it stays that way. So unlike a localizer course, we'll be flying an LNAV approach from the FAF all the way in with the same sensitivity, 0.3 miles. Like we said, the LNAV approach has only lateral guidance, no vertical guidance. So like other approaches that are lateral only, like a VOR localizer, we use an MDA we level off at 1140, or ideally a bit above that so as not to dip below, and stay there until either we get sight of the runway or go missed. Having vertical guidance, the way we would on an ILS approach, allows us to fly a bit differently. The next approach minimum up from LNAV is something called LNAV VNAV, lateral and vertical navigation. The vertical guidance in this case comes from something external to the GPS, usually a sensitive altimeter, which is why this is sometimes known as a barrow-assisted approach. With vertical guidance like this, the approach can be flown the way we fly a precision approach, meaning we follow a glide path down to a decision altitude, which can be a bit lower than the MDA of the LNAV. For this approach, we can go down to a decision altitude of 1078 feet. You don't see many aircraft equipped for these barrow-assisted LNAV VNAV approaches anymore. In their place, newer GPS units are able to do approaches to what are called localizer performance with vertical guidance. The localizer performance in the name refers to the fact that unlike on the LNAV approach where the course sensitivity stays the same along the entire final segment, the LPV gets more sensitive as we fly closer to the runway, just like on a traditional localizer. The course is only 350 feet wide to either side of the center line when we're at the runway threshold, so it's a much greater level of precision. In addition, the vertical guidance provided by the GPS is accurate enough to follow a glide path down to a lower decision altitude. On this approach, it's 1036 feet, the lowest minimum of all. Not all GPS units can fly approaches to LPV minimums. The unit must be what's called WAS enabled. WAS, or Wide Area Augmentation System, is a way for correction signals to be sent to a GPS receiver by ground stations so that small position errors can be ignored and replaced, making the fixes more precise. GPS units that aren't WAS equipped won't be able to fly to LPV minimums, and so they'll need to fly the approaches in LNAV, and without any other form of vertical navigation, we'll have to use the higher minimums and treat them as an MDA rather than as a decision altitude. Here are a few other acronyms you'll see thrown around when talking about GPS approaches. The approaches with minimums we use as decision altitudes thanks to the vertical guidance, are called appropriately approaches with vertical guidance, or APV. It's tempting to call these precision approaches because they're flown very much the same way as other precision approaches like an ILS. But the FAA doesn't define them as such, requiring, for instance, that we use non-precision alternate approach minimums when using them in our flight planning. 
You'll also see an acronym LNAV plus V, Lateral Navigation plus Vertical Guidance. You won't see this acronym on any FAA or Jeppesen approach plate because it's not an official type of GPS approach. It means that the GPS unit you're using is able to simulate a glide path for advisory purposes. Many airports have GPS approaches that don't use lower LPV minimums. Your unit may be WAS equipped, meaning it's able to fly an LPV, but if the approach doesn't offer LPV minimums, it won't be available. Instead, the unit will compute a glide path anyways, and you can reference it for a stable, continuous descent down to minimums. You're still flying an LNAV approach though, and have to respect the higher LNAV minimums, 1140 here, treating it as an MDA. Going below the MDA without the required visual runway cues, even if you're following the advisory glide path, won't protect you from obstacles and is against the rules. Another approach minimum that's more rare and not shown on our plate here is an LP. This is a localizer performance approach, but unlike the LPV above, doesn't include vertical guidance, usually due to terrain considerations. It provides the same super precise sensitivity on final down to 350 feet on either side of the center line, but doesn't include a glide path to follow. In that sense then, LP is the GPS equivalent of a localizer only approach, and so is flown the same as a non-precision, using an MDA rather than a decision altitude. Again, only WAS enabled units can fly it. Without that receiver, or if there was a WAS system outage, we'd revert to the LNAV minimums. So here are the more common GPS acronyms that get thrown around in training and IFR flying. Go ahead and do a screenshot of this now so that you have an at-a-glance reference of these. The acronyms are very similar and so it can be hard to distinguish, but hopefully this quick breakdown clears up much confusion. One of the main takeaways on this is to be able to distinguish which types of approach require use of a decision altitude and which require a minimum descent altitude, because this will determine in large part how you fly your approaches. If you're looking to really master IFR flying, do what thousands of your fellow pilots have done already and enroll in Flight Insight online ground schools. Head on over to the website, flight-insight.com, and sign up today.